All righty, welcome to a conversation with Karalia. Um, I'm here today with Kylie Rook, who is a yoga teacher extraordinaire. She is a roller skating queen, thanks to <laughs> lockdown, and a unicorn lover. If you ever get really, really lucky, you might run into her at a party or at a festival, and she will be dressed as a unicorn and on roller skates. Um, <laughs> Kylie, thank you so much for coming to talk to us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so the reason the reason I'm talking to Kylie is she has just completed a thousand days in a row of the same tantric yoga practice um, it's a practice called Uchara which I was taught by Christopher Tompkins in 2010 and oh so many things to talk about here um let me just feel into how to frame this Kylie let's start with the end and then we'll go back to the beginning so <laughs> Tell me what happened the day that it was a thousand days of practice. <laughs> well, it was actually really um, kind of exciting and synchronistic. Is that the right word? Um, because it happened to fall on the day that I was teaching a psychosomatics module. Um, and the psychosomatics module, there was a lot of stuff about like working, you know, on yourself and like meditation practices. And I shared the Uchara practice throughout that. And so it felt really kind of special to be sharing this practice with um, a bunch of teachers and then to hit my 1000 day mark. So, um, yeah, it felt special, but, it, you know, it wasn't any different to any other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, I've made a thousand days. And then, you know, the next yeah. day. Is and that's, but that's an extraordinary accomplishment. Like I've done the thousand days but it took me three attempts. Like I failed on day 337, had to start yeah. again. And then on day like 617, you just went all the way through. Like you'd never drop the ball. Mm. Yeah, I realized actually um, in doing it, like how, I guess, determined I can be and how like if I set my mind to something, I will just make it happen. And I think that's one of the, one of the big teachings I've learned from this is that I can do anything I choose to. I just, you know, got to set that compass in the right direction. And so, um, yeah, I mean, in the beginning, obviously, there was days where it might have slipped, but I was like, no, I've got to get it in. I've got to get it in. But then what happens is it just becomes a non-negotiable part of your day. So, like, the last 500 days felt easy because I wasn't having to think about it. It just is a natural part of my day now. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, what um, started off as just the uchara and sort of the, uh, you know, a shorter version of it has now morphed into a longer version that then has pranayama and other meditation tacked on the end of it. So yeah, I've gone mm. from like a person who thought she couldn't meditate and, you know, like had trouble sitting still for three minutes <laughs> to now somebody who could sit for an hour and do these meditation practices in the uchara and quite happy. So mm. massive change. So Let's go back. So I first really connected with you at Love Lake Festival because I knew of you and I see you on Instagram and I'm like, she's an awesome teacher. And to be to be absolutely honest, like, she's an awesome teacher who doesn't yet believe in herself. And I'm going to offer her this place <laughs> at Love Lake because I can see how awesome she is and I want her to know it. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's what I was thinking on my side of things. So you rock up and did Love Lake. What was Love Lake like for you? Where were you at in your development at Love Lake Festival? Oh my gosh. So I like, I was super excited to be teaching at it. First off, I was like, wow, you know, like opportunity of a lifetime, but my anxiety was just the roof, the roof. And like, I was um, not very, not, not sleeping very well. I'd wake up in my room and I'd had to practice, practice this flows and, you know, in my head and then go and teach. And I was all like on edge kind of get off and feel amazing and then be all like okay what's the next one that I'm teaching so there was a lot of this like ah, anxious energy and I remember after um completing the last class just this big like like yeah letting go and I think I came up to you and I just burst into tears and gave you a hug and said thank you very much and I have to go <laughs> that's right because you had to leave early for some reason I do remember that oh I was just my nervous system was like yeah. ah <laughs> yeah 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 I was so stoked when you came and did it because like I just had that knowingness of like this person is an awesome teacher and she you know I, I wanted to support you um 
Okay, so that was in 2017. And then fast forward, so it would have been 2019 when I launched the Direct Realization Tantra Immersions. Mm. Um, and I remember thinking quite clearly at the time, Kylie needs to come and do this. This would be really awesome for you. Um, do you remember when you saw it? When yeah. It came up? <laughs> I do, actually. Um, because it, yeah, like 2019 was also... Um, the year that my father passed away and that kind of threw me into a head spin and a lot of lot of stories came up a lot of stories and I just uh, at that point almost was going to quit yoga I was like I don't know if I'm supposed to be in this world I don't know if this is me kind of thing so there was a lot of that and you know looking back on it now I know that it was all just the mind and stories and etc and yeah your direct realization came up on Facebook I think and I was like oh I need to do this and then the other part of me went ah, no <laughs> <It's> scary <laughs> and then I think I reached out to you or you, I we met at OM because um, you were teaching there and I asked you about it and I got really like more intrigued and I was like yes I think I need to do this and I went away and tried to fill out the form got like part way through and just went ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and so it took me I think three attempts to fill out the form and a few phone calls from you going, I think I remember that because I'm like why is Kylie her application hasn't come in and I contacted you and you were like I've tried three times <laughs> <laughs> yeah so there was like this weird like um like part of me really wanted to do it and the other part was just so petrified yeah um yeah so applied and then you know um I think leading up to Christmas like you know the wheels had fallen off again and so I was looking forward to the training and then after Christmas I felt quite good and then it was kind of a week out from training and I was like I think I need to go I'm feeling good now <laughs> and so there was the part of me that was like really fearing being there and you know what might come up um and then you sent an email out going some of you are probably thinking about pulling out. This is quite natural. And I was like, damn it, she's onto me. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. It's really, really normal for people who've signed up for my stuff. Well, not just my stuff, but any any deep work, a week mm. out, you know, there's a Buddhist name for it, which I completely forget right now, but they have an actual name for it because it's part of the phenomena of the conditioning going. <laughs> but you know that other part that just knows this is a thing to to support the awakening process mm. um so you made it you made it to the january 2020 we literally started i think it was january 17th it was like right before covid was really starting to be a thing it was mm. some big astrological thing and there we were the 12 of us on this very first direct realization tantra immersion what was it like for you being with everyone being in the role of student going through the body of material um initially when I showed up I freaked out again because I was like like I realized um and going into that place I was like oh I actually have a little bit of social anxiety which I've never really realized and kind of I think being in the role of the teacher sort of has helped mask that a little bit for me um okay and, <laughs> yeah <laughs> So yeah, when it, when it was like turn up and they're like, oh, now you're sharing a room with all these people. And I was like, ah, ah. And so there was all of this like, you know, stuff that was unfolding. Um, and then I remember sitting in the first circle and kind of going around and getting really upset and feeling like I didn't belong. Mm. And yeah, and it was really interesting. Like this um, story just kept kind of surfacing and um like I loved all the teachings, loved the meditation, loved the, you know, all the practical stuff that we were doing um, until we got to, I think it was the, um, the 20 year meditation. No, not 20 year meditation. It was like a meditation on desired reality. That's mm -hmm. right. And there was nothing, nothing at all. And I remember just thinking, oh yeah, that's interesting. Must have some blockages further down, you know, make a note in my diary, do some work on that when I get, you know, I was very pragmatic. It was oh, interesting. I must work on that. <laughs> so it was feeling like, you know, like, yeah, I'm getting all these tools to work on when I go home and um, feeling quite good. And, and then, yeah, we had to do a like circle check-in of 
that exercise and I remember feeling okay as everybody was saying their stuff and then it, when it got to me it was just like the floodgates opened and yeah <laughs> I don't remember much of the process other than feeling like I'd been like zapped with electricity and um yeah I always yeah. have that image of like the the superhero who gets like <laughs> zapped yeah. alive um but yeah, yeah was, a lot. Yeah, I remember that there was a ma you had a massive nervous system release. It was like the nervous system been holding something for so long, and it just it went. It was like, whoa, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. And how did yeah. you feel like after that that process that you went through, nervous system release, digestion of samskara? What did it feel like after it? Um, it felt amazing. Like. I just remember looking at the world differently, you know, like looking at the colors, like everything just looked more vibrant. I felt more alive, more energized. Um, yeah, I just had all of this energy. You know, I remember going back and I basically quit coffee from that point. Haven't had coffee since. Didn't feel no like way. it anymore. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, had like way more energy, but also way more capacity, I think, for stuff as well and way less anxiety mm. like things weren't kind of yeah bothering me so much I didn't have that same level of anxiety like stepping in to teach classes or um being around people yeah it was like a huge <laughs> weight had been like lifted it was phenomenal yeah really phenomenal so yeah so yeah. when then did the decision arise to, because we did Uchada every single day on the on the immersion. So it was like five or six days of practice. Mm. When did you decide that you were going to, did you decide to commit to 40 days or to, a th like what was the process around that commitment? Yeah, so um, because we've done it every day, when I came back, I just continued to do it. So I, I think I started my 40 days from like the day that we arrived back. Um, officially because I didn't count the days that we've done it together mm -hmm. um, and initially I was just like I'm just gonna try 40 days and see what see what happens see what comes up um, and so I had yeah the the uchara and also the statement of intent that I created at the um, the retreat and so that was mm -hmm. my practice for 40 mm -hmm. days and um, you know initially there was a lot of stuff that was coming up during the um dissolving and you know devouring phase and the meditation part lots of stuff was coming up and so um it was really interesting sitting with that and um noticing <laughs> um and then you know got to 40 days and I was still feeling amazing and life was still great even though we were you know in lockdown I think or yeah we would have been by then yep. yeah so then I thought well I might as well keep going because this seems to be working for me <laughs> um and so I kept going and I think um I think like after the 40 days I thought well I'll try 90 you know and see what happens um and then that next uh block of time was when I started to kind of realize some of the attachments that I had to like being a yoga teacher um and just all of the different labels that we wear Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that stuff that I worked on in the process was dissolving that mm. which was really interesting. I had this kind of moment where I literally felt like, you know, um, I always liken it to the stars when they implode and on mm -hmm. themselves. That's what it felt like, like, like yeah. folding it, everything imploding and then just blackness, nothingness. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that was like the next uh, 40 or 45 days was all about that mm -hmm. um, and then I got through that and I was like well this is still working for me um, <laughs> still feeling good so I might as well keep going and then of course we went into sort of Christmas time which you know can be difficult because there's things that you're doing and festivals and what have you and um, managed to still do it while at a festival <laughs> managed yeah. to still do it with people around in the house that you know aren't used to hearing me chant and so I was like I can still do this like mm -hmm. you know and um and then once I'd done the kind of 365 days I was like okay well let's just see if we can get to a thousand and it wasn't mm. sort of like oh I'm gonna definitely get there I was just like well let's just see and if you if you don't no big deal you've done a year 
um, that's the longest you have committed to something <laughs> daily. Mm. So yeah, uh, right. even that's a you know huge accomp accomplishment. Um, yeah, but I think just the fact that I was noticing that I was just feeling better and feeling more grounded and able to deal with um, the anxiety if it did come up, it wasn't as um kind of crippling and yeah I just was sleeping better feeling better relationship was better mm -hmm. so, yeah. so once you sort of had that realization around day 365 like, I'm just going to keep going and see if I get to a thousand were there any moments where you almost missed yeah you know, did you have any of those, like I've had a few moments where I'm literally lying in bed and I'm going to sleep it's like I haven't done my practice and I sit up in bed and I do it right then and there. Um, anything like that? Or did you just always, this is what I'm intrigued about because I actually just forgot once, but it sounds mm. like you always remember. Did you have a way of, did you put on your phone? Like what was the no, what so I, I played around with when I did it. So initially I um, did it in the morning and then I started doing it like when I'd finished seeing clients to see whether that was a better time for it. Um, and then I played around with doing it before bed. Um, and then what I noticed was that the later it was in the day, the more likely I was to be like, oh, shoot, got to go and do my uchara. So then I thought, actually, maybe I'm just going to put it as how I start my day and see how that goes. And so I think after, um, as well after the first year, it might have been like after a year and a half, I just switched it to the morning. And ever since then, it's just been the morning. And so it's just ended up being, you know, yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that makes sense. You're pretty much just rolling out of bed, rolling into practice. And that's how every single day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not so good on the morning. I like mm. sleeping in. I <laughs> so I've always tended to do it in the evening last thing, which then, yeah, does mean that sometimes I have all, I did forget it once and or have almost forgotten it. Um, mm. Mm. Sometimes I'll do it, you know, twice. Like I'll do it in the morning. And if I've had quite an intense day with clients, then I might do it again in the evening. As mm -hmm. a sort of, so, um, yeah, as a clear. Anything that's, yeah, clearing yeah. kind of process. Um, yeah. But yeah, for me, I found it's just set my day up really well. Um, mm. And, you know, it's funny because I used to think, oh you know will, will it be hard to get up and you know commit to that amount of time in the morning like what if I want to sleep in but my body now just like wakes up even without my alarms like it's time to go and do oh, your yeah. job <laughs> so what, what time are you getting up in the morning to do it um it ranges between 5 30 and 6 so it's not super early I'm, I'm like that's early man I, yeah. I'm about to do a four-day online retreat that starts at 5 a.m because it's over in the states Mm. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to get up at 4.45 for four mornings in a row. Yeah. But I'm curious. Yeah, I, mean, I used to get up at 4.30, 4 a.m., 4.30. Right. So when I was teaching a lot of morning classes. And then um, once the pandemic happened, I stopped teaching a lot of those and I've let myself sleep, um, which has been amazing. And then, mm. yeah, now I'm just doing the uchara. Basically, it, it happens when I wake up. I try not to set an alarm. Yeah. But my body is just naturally waking up. Um, That's that cool. Time. So, does it feel like uchada practice? And just, just so this is a um, for people to know what uchada is, because we're talking about it as if everyone should know what it is. Um, mm. This is a classical tantric practice that I was taught by Christopher Tompkins, who's an amazing scholar practitioner. Direct, he, he got it direct out of a practice manual from mm. about the 12th, 13th century, which would have been referring to practices that were, it probably comes from the 8th or 9th century, possibly. Um, and the practice itself involves meditation, pranayama, chanting, visualization. And it's within the Shakta Upaya or the empowered means. It's very much about the purification of the mental, emotional body and the energetic body. Um, that's your little blue peeps back to our regular show here. Um, <laughs> and what was I going to say? Oh, how's it impacted your teaching? Because you, you teach primarily asana, pranayama, meditation. Like tell mm -hmm. people what you teach first so people know yeah um so i do mostly one-to-ones um and then i run teacher trainings um with sandy as part of inspire um and then i've got a couple of group classes that i teach which are kind of more vinyasa based because it's the umbrella <clears throat> that it sits under at the studio um so <laughs> 
prior <laughs> to Uchada, I spent a lot of time like um, nutting out sequences, like like really um, being pedantic, OCD, like obsessing over the sequence, practicing it over and over. I would get up in the morning, make sure I practiced it before I taught it. Um, and even if I was teaching the same practice the next day, I would still get up and practice it before I taught it. Like it was, yeah, there was a real sense of I, I need to have it under control. I need to make sure that it's totally in my head. You know, um, there wasn't a lot of letting go. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of just allowing space. There wasn't a lot of just being in the moment um, and being with the flow of life. Um, and so what I've noticed now is that I'm much more in that space of flow of um, essence nature of just being in the moment. And so, you know, with my clients, it's like I'm meeting them where they're at and whatever it is that they need on the day. And so I never know what it's going to be because I never know how they're going to turn up. And so mm. I'm allowing the space for like that intuition to come through and be like this is what this is where we're going and you know some days I'm like wow that was a really cool sequence and I write in my journal record this <laughs> <laughs> yeah I love that so you're spontaneously allowing it to come through and mm. then you're recording it then it becomes rather than thinking about it yeah yeah that's yeah. really cool yeah yeah so it's cool and then um yeah like the classes that I'm teaching in studio now I'm not um practicing before I get in the room like their sequence there might be you know the kind of bones of the sequence in there but then I'm getting into the room and I'm more like present with what's happening in the space and adjusting as I need to and mm. I feel really confident doing that whereas in the past I was like no must have everything in like controlled and <laughs> yeah no what everything's going to happen and you know it, it's a long way and uh, yeah and you just can't <laughs> it, just, it creates too much anxiety because you're trying yeah. to get every single variable which you just don't know yeah I love that um do you do you feel like it's impacted relationships yeah. something I'm curious about yeah yeah and what yeah. what have you noticed with relationships being impacted by Uchada um the first thing I noticed was um <clears throat> I had a, a little um story I guess running um in me from previous relationships that meant like every time um you know I got touched it meant something to me you know it, it was a, it was a story and so once I realized oh hang on a second that what what's happening there has nothing to do with the story I've created it actually allowed again kind of like a softening and a letting go and that like letting the guards down so I was more open and um uh like the relationship actually got better because I wasn't all guarded waiting for these moments that were going to trigger things from the past mm -hmm. uh, because I became more and more aware of oh that's a trigger from the past that's not present moment mm. that's not back here so I got really good at recognizing when it was actually just a story and just a trigger versus actual reality I think that was the the big change was actually realizing oh, shit I'm living in stories so much of the time mm. and those stories are like creating all these triggers which are then impacting the relationship right here and now and if mm -hmm. I can dissolve the stories dissolve the triggers then I can actually be really present and open and loving with what's happening right here right now so yeah, like relationship has improved massively and um, and even like interactions with other people, interactions with clients, because I'm not in my head thinking about what I need to say or do next. I'm just allowing mm. being in a place of kind of presence or loving presence, whatever you want to call it, essence mm -hmm. nature. And then yeah. allow the the intuition uh, yeah that's cool right, so. Oh. so for people who are considering you know committing to practice whether it's 40 days 90 120 a thousand what would you say you know whatever practices doesn't have to be each other obviously but for people who want to commit yeah what would you say to them 
I would say do it. <laughs> Absolutely do it. Um, and even if you start with like a small chunk, like I remember, uh, like I hated, absolutely hated meditation initially. Um, and so I actually started with three minutes a day because I knew that it would, I, I would do it because it was only three minutes. I couldn't be like, well, I don't have time. Um, I was like three minutes and I put it, I think I put it as soon as I walked in the door um, before I go and like make dinner or anything like that, it was like three minutes meditation and then continue with the evening. Um, and then what I noticed in doing that is that then my body and my mind craved more of that mm -hmm. space, the silence. And so then when I craved more, then I added on more time and then I added on more time. And then it started to become easier to just do it because it wasn't like I was having having to make myself do it because I actually was desiring wanting to do it um and then yeah. yeah same with the uchara because I already had that kind of foundation of having set myself up when I started the uchara I started with a slightly shorter practice so that I knew that I would do it mm -hmm. and I just started to lengthen it once once my body was like craving wanting to sit yeah so yeah it's such a good point it's one of the things I always say to people is just do bare minimum just show up for bare minimum, right? It's good enough. And and yeah. it's a good way of um kind of getting around circumventing the perfectionist tendency that thinks it doesn't count unless it's exactly like this. It's like, no, yeah. just good enough, it's good enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because if I had if I had been like that, it has to be like this, then I would have failed, you know, several times because some yeah. days I only had, you know, a short amount of time, but I was like, I'm still going to do it. Even if it has to be a short amount of time, I'm still going to do it. Yeah. Um, I think it's, yeah, allowing yourself that freedom that <laughs> just get on your mat and do it. doesn't matter how long it is, but yeah. yeah. So when you look back, so where it's like, you know, October, 2022 now, when you look back on yourself, like three years ago, mm. how much change do you reckon there's been in those three years? I would say heaps. <laughs> it feels <laughs> like heaps. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> just in terms of like how I am in terms of like, you know, teaching, for instance, way less anxiety. I sleep way better um, than I used to because there used to be like, you know, there's kind of the hum going on all the time. And so my sleep was always a bit iffy. Mm. Um, and then there was always that like sense of anxiety when I stepped in the room, that sense of, um, uh, I hope they like me, <laughs> mm. you know, a um, lot of like needing validation. Um, and um, like I say, a lot of triggers that I wasn't even aware of until I started doing the practice and then, you know, realized that all of these things that were making me react a certain way weren't actually the reality of the situation so yeah. allowing those to kind of dissolve um and then also just like a, a sense of fearlessness fearlessness mm. yeah, that's come through you're like this real sense of courage like yeah I can do that you know yeah I am going to start skating even though I'm like in my 40s and yeah I am going to sit a competition and you know all yeah. of the stuff that I'm thinking would I have done this if I was still there anxious like worried about controlling for every circumstance yeah um, I wondered that with the roller skating because you started roller skating in the first lockdown no last year it was only last year yeah I was I was I did wonder that I'm like I wonder if this is part you know Uchada Uchada impact um mm. tell us about the roller skating why did you start and, and what's happened since because it's epic yeah. I love watching you skate on Instagram <laughs> yeah it, it, well and I think you know again I think it was a that sense of just being in flow so not over kind of because up until you know a few years ago I used to overthink everything like making a decision was crippling because I was like well I could do this and I could do that and I'd sit there for ages like you know <laughs> um and so once you know started doing the uchara and started to live more in that sense of flow it there was less decisions yeah you know because you're just yeah. following that natural flow of life and so um, my partner and I, we were going to the movies and we walked past Amazon Skate and Snot and they had like a unicorn colored pair of skates in the window. 
and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my, my husband was like, but you don't roller skate. And I was like, but I might. <laughs> and so <laughs> went to the cinema and then came home. And then a couple of days later, I was like, I'm just going down to St. Luke's to pick up some books <laughs> and walked down and came back with some roller skates. And then, yeah, I basically got sent some messages from people saying, oh, you should go and check out Hey Macarena's adult classes. Went along to my first adult class and was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Why have I not done this before in my life? And then just kind of kept on that um, train. But it's also been a really interesting journey alongside the Uchara because it's allowed me to see some of my patterns and habits also. Um, and that need for control came up again in roller skating. And of course, you can't control in roller skating. You've got to be in flow because if you're trying to control, you're all rigid and then you're more likely to fall over. So I feel like it's been like the this kind of uchara has now filtered into the roller skating to be like, okay, now you've got flow in your life. Are you really in flow? <laughs> like, mm. let's see if you can stay in flow now that we're adding a little bit more challenge and, um, you know, here's some more fears that come up because, you know, as soon as you start going faster, it's like the fear of falling. And then you go off into story. And then I'm like, huh, that's a story. That is totally mm. a story. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's been really interesting as well. And a couple of times when I have like wiped out, like I did on Monday, um, I've ended up just laughing and going, oh my God, I had such a big story about what that was going to feel like. And it didn't feel like that at all. <laughs> so, you know, it's just this constant reminder of how much we live in our heads versus mm -hmm. actually in the reality and the flow of life. And yeah. so it's really nice to to have that, to really like embody and keep embodying those um, teachings. Mm. It's all very just, oh, your feet are on the floor, but <laughs> put some yeah, wheels on flow. and can you still embody the teachings? So, I mean, because you didn't just buy the roller skates and roller skate every now and then, like you actually, yeah. Yeah. Tell people what you did with the skates, like, and all the way through, like. I got, so yeah, got the skates, started doing, um, one of uh, the classes and then we went into lockdown again last year so um then I would basically if I didn't have clients I was on my deck skating around and trying to learn new tricks and um getting more confident on my skates and then I uh, decided to once we got out of lockdown to start doing one to one so I could get um you know some more tricks under my belt feel more confident and then I'd been skating um about eight months and they were like, oh, so there's a competition coming up. You could enter if you like. And I was like, what do I have to do? And they're like, well, you just choose a choose a song. We make up a dance and you get to wear a sparkly dress. And I was like, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> I love it. And again, it was like, you know, I didn't overthink it. Like the old me would have gone, oh, but I've only gone... I've only got eight months on skates and I still don't know how to do these tricks and la, 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 la. And, you know, I would have thought about all the reasons why not. And I just was like, sparkly dress song, dancing, I'm in. <laughs> love it. I love it. So, yeah, because you're not just skating, you know, back and forth. You're doing tricks and all these kind of things on skates. And like you say, you're in your 40s learning this, right? I mean, you definitely have the added advantage of being a yoga teacher. So there is some obviously yeah. some embodiment that that would have helped the journey yeah. what was the competition like how was that um it was it was a little bit nerve-wracking but I were it was interesting because of all of us like you know the few years of practices now and I, I sat there and I was like oh I can feel there's a little bit of anxiety there but I'm okay I'm a, like is it anxiety or is it in excitement and so I sort of sat with it for a bit um, and I was like, actually, I'm going to call it excitement. It's excitement. I'm just excited. And um, yeah. And so then when I got out and started skating around, I, um, you know, got through the first bit of my routine, which had this hard little spin on it and I didn't fall over. And so then I had this big, like beaming smile at the judges and then carried on. <laughs> and I was like, okay, yeah. Like, you know, I just think back to the person I was a few years ago. She wouldn't have done that. She would have been, she would have thought of all the reasons not to, 
Mm -hmm. um, rather than like all the reasons why it was fun and you know um, just yeah. kind of following your heart and following that that natural flow and rhythm of life and um, mm -hmm. that was the other thing actually I realized um, through the course of this I had a massive story around um, something that happened when I was at dance school just after I at dance school which actually stopped me dancing for a very long time and I love to dance, absolutely love it. And so and during the process of this uchara, I recognized that that was sitting there and, you know, preventing me from actually going out and doing things like roller skating or even just like taking a dance class. And I remember in one of the lockdowns, actually taking a, a dance class online and like it was like my whole being just lit up again and this... And I was like, that's right. This is a massive part of who I am. And yeah, this thing that had happened had basically created this little layer of conditioning and story. And yeah, through the uchara, I was able to process all of that that hadn't been processed and dissolved. And then from that point on, it was like dancing on the deck, dancing in the studio, dancing on my skates, <laughs> dancing yeah. with my husband. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so, so yeah. epic. Yeah, more dancing, more dancing worldwide. Like, let's just mm. dance more. And I mean, you can watch my Instagram feed, dancing, right? Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, why am I publishing videos of me dancing? You know, like I'm not a dance teacher. I don't even teach physical embodiment practices anymore. But mm. then I'll get a message from someone going, oh my God, I hadn't danced in eight years and I saw your video and I got up and danced. And I'm just like, okay, I'm trusting this, that there's yeah. a reason for putting dance videos on my IG. And I imagine with your roller skating videos, you know, on your idea, what's the response been from your community that knows you as a yoga teacher? And now all of a sudden there's all these roller skating videos coming through. How is the response? Um, they love it. Yeah, they love it. And I think um, it's been inspiring for other people as well to realize that you're never too old to pick something up. And if there is something that you really want to do in life, just go out and do it. Yeah. Like the only person that's stopping you is yourself. Yeah. And so often we, you know, we create that story once we get, you know, into our forties or whatever. Oh, I'm a bit old now. Probably shouldn't be doing that. It's like, <laughs> why not? <laughs> now I'm like all about smashing those. <laughs> Thank you. Totally, I agree. We'll do that. <laughs> what does it mean to be in your forties? You know, like, yeah, mm -hmm. who, who makes up the rules? We do, so we get to break the rules. Yeah. Um, uh, so we do now. We do now with your practice. You know, practice. Are you still doing your charter every every day? Yeah. yeah yeah it's interesting because I was wondering whether like at a thousand days whether I'd just be like okay done on to something else but actually it was just a thousand days and then thousand and one a thousand and two so you know it's just part of my day um I love it it sets me up for the day um as I mentioned some days I have like quite a long pranayama practice that then um happens afterwards um and yeah, I've sort of thought about maybe um, bringing in some other practices. Um, haven't really chosen one yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it may be that uh, whatever I decide to bring on um, as well is a, something that I do in the evening, perhaps. Um, mm. Yeah, because at the moment I don't feel, yeah, I mean, I, it's not like I'm, oh my God, I have to have it, but I yeah. just don't yeah because there was a point during the practice I remember in the first year where I thought oh am I addicted to this mm. so that was one of the things that I played with was oh what what if I didn't do it how would that mm -hmm. feel um yeah yeah I've had that same question as well in terms of like oh am I now attached to doing this practice mm. right the different like feeling into discerning that difference between commitment showing up every day no matter what the mind says and mm. grasping attachment to the thing um yeah it's, it's an interesting journey around that for sure um mm. we're too with the roller skating you got are you going to see your more competitions or is that just the one or no no I've got more coming up I've got um medal tests coming up and then I've got um the Auckland um opens I think they call it coming up so more chances to wear a sparkly dress <laughs> so epic I at some point I need to come to one of those competitions live I think that would be freaking amazing to come yeah. and watch people roller skate like I've always loved dancing I used to go roller skating when I was young we had a roller skating rink in Dunedin and it was kind of the cool place as a teenager to go hang out sometimes 
Yeah. Um, and I own roller skates. I own a pair of roller skates now. I have roller skates, but I definitely have not had your dedication commitment to go and learn all the tricks and do all the things. Um, mm. Yeah. You know, I, you know, like I feel part of that is from the Uchara as well, because it's that, you know, one pointed focus, you just get up and you do it. And so you learn to be really disciplined, disciplined and committed and to make time, you know, because time yeah. is also like a construct and we often are like, oh, I don't have time for yeah. X, Y, Z. And it's like, well, you can make time. <laughs> it's like, yeah, make time to do it all. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's you choose to put your energy, I think. Um, yeah, that's it. It's the desire, right? The desire and going, okay, here's the desire and the will and then the commitment to just like, all right, let's show up, let's do the thing, whatever that thing happens mm. to be. Yeah. Um, yeah fantastic so cool to talk to you Kai, and so amazing and beautiful to watch your transformation and to watch the flowering you know since 2017 showing up to love lake are you doing any of the festivals this year are you teaching at any of the festivals i am not actually i'm probably going to go and just dance my little booty off <laughs> okay cool yeah. I'll, I'll be on i'll be on the dance floor as well so we can dance together i might have to see if i find a unicorn costume <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Awesome. yeah no i'm not pitching at any um festivals but yeah planning to go for sure cool so i'm going to put obviously links to your website and your instagram etc down the bottom is there anything in particular you want to share with people in terms of offerings or where they can you know things you're coming up that they might want to check out um i have a restorative training coming up if anybody's interested and restorative is another one practice that Initially, I was like, Ugh, why would you want to lie around and <laughs> do nothing kind of thing, you know? And now I'm like, restorative is amazing. Like, it's actually taught me so much about, like, the guarding that I've had in my body and, um, yeah, kind of softening those boundaries and yielding and all of that. Yeah. So it's been a really, really valuable um, lesson as well. Yeah. Because you've done a lot of training around the somatics, right, of of yoga and of the body, etc. And you've studied with the yoga medicine folk. Yeah. Um, I know we were wrapping up, but I just think this is important to touch on as as well. Um, the depth of your training when it comes to teaching yoga. Can you share with us, yeah, the scope a little, oh, just gosh. a little bit, hit on that. Yeah, because I know you've done heaps and done heaps. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I've done a lot with yoga medicine. So I've almost done a thousand hours, I think, with yoga medicine. And I'm one of the teachers on their online um, platform. Um, I've also done somatics um, training. So somatics is, um, well, there's different schools of it, but it's a lot of floor based stuff. And it is about releasing kind of deep held tension within the, the muscles. And it's also about learning new ways of moving. So really good for the nervous system um, and for resetting the nervous system, particularly if you've had trauma or injury or um, if you're just a tight, you know, sympathetic nervous system activation overdrive person. Um, I've done training with a lot of training with Jules Mitchell as well, which is biomechanics and um, I'm also uh, mentoring with her um, at the moment. I've done training with Shiva Ray. I've done training with, um, oh gosh, uh, Rocky and Noah and Amy and Polity and um, Rod Stryker. And it's probably better to ask me who haven't I trained with. <laughs> yeah. So with all that training that you've done, and your understanding of the somatics and the biomechanics and the anatomy perspective, et cetera. What do you see in Uchada, if, if you know what I mean? Like in terms yeah. of how it's operating on the mental, emotional and energetic body, what's, what's your take on it? Yeah, so um, I think so. from a Western science perspective, it's um, helping to reset your chemoreceptors. So the chemoreceptors are in the... Um, blood and they basically measure the level of carbon dioxide so oftentimes people who are prone to faster breathing or panic attacks their chemoreceptors are set quite high and so it doesn't take much for them to be triggered into um, breathing erratically so it's helping with that 
Um, it's helping stimulate the vagus nerve, which is part of your parasympathetic nervous system response. Um, and so that's improving things like vagal tone and heart rate variability. So that, um, you know, when you do get a fright or you do go into sympathetic nervous system activation, you can come back um, relatively quickly. Um, it is helping to change structures in the brain. So like turning down the amygdala, turning up the insula or, you know, increasing the gray matter in the insula so that you're starting to sense and feel your body without going off into the story and the emotional um, uh you know, patterning that we're often triggered into. Um, because of the visualization, it's also helping to turn down the part of the brain that likes to live in story. So it's giving your brain like something to kind of focus on so that you're turning down that part, which then means you're also creating space. So rather than what normally happens is that we're predicting, you know, 90% of our what we're feeling is made up. And it's a prediction based on where we've been, what's happened in the past, our memories, et cetera, et cetera. So this practice is allowing more space so that rather than going off into that prediction, we have now got this opportunity to create kind of like a new reality or to be aware of what reality is versus the story. Mm. Um, and I think that's the most valuable is that it stops you from living in that prediction of what you yeah what your yeah. brain thinks life is or what you know reality is versus what reality actually is yeah yeah epic I love the way that you are able to because of your understanding of all of that and your fact you've done the practice for so long so you've got direct experience you were able to just go ah it's doing this and it's doing this and it's doing this and it's doing this that's amazing because mm -hmm. I don't have that understanding I work in a different kind of way mm -hmm. um so I really appreciate your wisdom on that and your sharing of that thank you yeah and because oh. you know like sensation <clears throat> like our emotions obviously are very much attached to the sensations that we feel but the emotions we often get it wrong so like I was speaking earlier about anxiety and um uh, excitement because uh -huh. they feel similar in the body but if we automatically go oh it's anxiety then we've already gone into that story and already in that prediction of it whereas if we can just feel it for the sensation without attaching any story or emotion to it then that also helps us to change how we're viewing what's happening in the moment and then how we view life so mm. yeah it's that that's cool that moment to yeah like yeah on rather than react yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense like I noticed from each other like my whole experience of reality is different the way I interact is different the reactivity level is everything is just mm. like I'm so grateful to that practice mm. to learning that practice and now being able to share that practice and you know it just seeing you hit the thousand days was just like fuck yes it was just such mm. a huge fuck yes because in a way it's like you're the laboratory you're the you know you, you, you've proven the experiment of like yeah this woman's done it and look at her experience of you know it's not just me anymore mm. and there's others in our community that are hitting those big numbers too and having these big shifts which is mm. just such a delight to see yeah yeah it's cool. magic so yeah I highly recommend it to um people and yeah oh, the other training I was going to say is I'm also now doing Hakomi um mm. training which is interesting because it's very very similar in lots of ways in terms of sitting in loving presence they call it loving presence so we call it essence nature but it's yeah. that same thing as like can you sit in that place of loving presence essence nature rather than needing to be in the story and being out you know uh, needing to know what to say or how to react to this person it's like I'm just sitting and being in the space yeah and allow yeah. them through so yeah it's really interesting that I've been drawn down that path and then as soon as I got into it I was like oh this is so similar I'm like oh interesting yeah yeah I know a number of Hakomi practitioners and they've experienced the process we just call it the process um mm. just meeting people where they are holding space and they're like whoa this is really similar to Hakomi it's yeah mm. but it's coming through the classical tantra tradition it's not therapy mm. but it's incredibly 
healing and resolves things out of the nervous system, digests emotion, can can totally digest trauma. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's a, that's cool. We might have to have another discussion down the line about Haikomi and the process and how those things intersect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Love to. Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much for making time to chat today. No problem. It's been awesome. And thank you so much for introducing me to the practice and mm. <laughs> making sure that I went to that first training. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. I just had a knowing. I'm like, this woman needs to be there. Yeah. So, uh, thank you.